Hey boys and girls of the YouTube world, today we're going to see if we can get a Willys Jeepster running. That's right, she's a Willys and she's kind of an oddball. Story on this one, uh, it's my grandpa's, or was my grandpa's, and it got passed on to my aunt. So it's been in storage for quite a while. Uh, she decided she's not going to do anything with it, so my dad decided he's going to take it. And so, of course, I'm the one with the trailer, so I'm going to go load it up and we'll see if we can't get it running. Like I said, uh, this thing's been in my family for I don't know 50 ish years, something like that. It was last run in about 1975. My dad remembers driving it, him and some of his classmates. Uh, Grandpa always said that somebody overheated it, uh, not pointing any fingers, but I believe he uh, thought it was a guy who looks uh, just like me, but a generation older. So we'll see what happens. It's got a F head, I believe, flat four cylinder in it. Um, yeah, kind of neat, kind of rare. We'll see, I'm not a huge fan of them. That's why it's just been kind of sitting for all these years, but they're kind of neat. Convertible Jeep type deal, wagon, I don't know what you can call it. They're just two-wheel drive, so uh, here we go. Roads are super nice today. Got our first snow of the season. And there it is. Nope, just kidding, that's a Jeep pickup. There it is. Tucked in the corner. Sure enough, no top. Maroon with black fenders. Tires even look like they're up. Oh, it's a three on the tree. Looks like it's out of gear. That's a, tell me that's a rag and not a mouse nest. Oh yeah, of course it's a mouse nest. Oh, for crying out loud. No, oh, it's a rag. Whew, good deal. Oh. Uh, why would you make a mouse nest right there? That's a, oh, it's just insulate. I thought it was all rust. That's a classy paint job. It is. They, they look pretty in that color too. The yellow? That's no, a, the, the red part of it. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, compression really. Yeah. Did it go or is that just the... Yeah. Can't see with your hands. Ah. Oh, I didn't see any wiggle down below. No, I think she's. Oil might be a little cool today. <laughs> Pump's turning hard. Thick stuff. See, these have got the front spring and the spindles are attached to the front spring. Like the lower control arms are part of the spring? Oh, yeah. So it's got an upper control arm and then the lower is a transverse like a Ford, but it's part of the spindle. Yeah. And then look at how the shock ties from the upper control arm to that lower point. Like that shock probably never. Well, didn't do much. No. No. I mean that distance. Oh. Is yeah. going to change fractions of an inch through the hole. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, Plymouth was good for doing that too, tying the upper and lower control arm together with a shock. It's like, well, they they move together. So. so what year is it? Like I always thought it was a '51. Oh, it's got to be older than that. 51, look at the front end of that pickup. That's a 51 to 52. See how the fender 50? Oh, they got that. Here. Yep. And then the grill comes out. And that one's flat. And that one's flat. And then the hood emblem and the... This the... must be the... Well, the first one was made, what, 48? 48 to 51. There was some 52s left that they made these out of? Yeah. So these are pretty, so five years, 48 to 52, huh? Well, I suppose it was after the war, they went to whoever was punching refrigerators for them, made body panels for them. Yeah, the Jeep didn't have, didn't that's have why they, were, they called them slab sided, like that pickup. And it was one of the refrigerator manufacturers. That's the only way they could do it. During the war, or after, after, the, after war. the war. Yep. These two, you know, I mean, they're just slap-sided. Well, 
The tire's gonna hold air. Looks like those ones do. I might as well try now before we start rolling around and knock them off the bead. And I think Duff, you a Jeep dog? Come here. Check out all the smells. What is that? What is that? Anything good? Looks like the spare tire's gone. It says Overland on it. Is it good, Duff? You can get the steps so you can climb in the back seat. You're riding in the front though, ain't you? Good your white walls. Willie's hubcaps. Kind of got a little mini fender skirt in there. Spare hubcap and a stack of fuel filters. And the boat tank. What do you think? Looks like I used to it just a little dirtier. So, guys, this is my dad. He's the one who uh, gave me all these bad habits. He thinks I'm an idiot for doing YouTube, but whatever. Here he is. What do you think, Duff? There's some good stuff in there. He was the last one to drive it. He thinks it was about 1975. That's where these came from. And he said it was running on a boat tank back then. He was born in 57 and it's got 59 tags on it. So he was clearly illegally driving it at that time. Story is, I got another uncle who was born in 47 and grandpa had this and kind of got it painted up and fixed up for him to drive. When he was old enough to drive, so probably in about 59-ish. Dad said Jerry, his brother, was into model cars. And that's where these scallops on the dash come from, was a model car kit. We're thinking it's like a 48, maybe 47, 49. We'll have to do some more digging. Oh, there must be some more decals in the wing window. It looks like it's got a snake in it. You're just... Checking this thing out, Duff, huh? Was the interior pretty crusty back then? Do you remember, did it have a top on it or did he never have a top? I was thinking he never had a top for it. But it must have been this god awful light yellow at some point. I'm pretty sure that's what it probably was originally. Yeah. And then it always sat in the building called the Sheep Shed, right? Yep. Even after it was done or before? After. A little soft under the windshield. We did try to turn it over and it uh, seems stuck. I don't know. What's in there, Duff? 61,340 miles. Oh, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. I didn't see an air cleaner in there. Looks like he had the oil line kinked off. Dual horns, whoever painted it did a nice job of just covering everything under the engine bay too. Well, it's out of gear, because it rolled. No coolant in it, no flex hose. Just a straight shot, oh, except for the lowers of flex hose. Looks like that thing would turn into dust. Is this our dipstick? Sounds like it. Well, it's got oil in it. Ain't the worst looking stuff. You don't know what's below the dipstick though. Right. Well, it's it's not over full though at least, so not a ton of humidity. What do you think, Duff? Go for a ride? Where do you want to go? Something's turning. Is it? I don't think it is. Let's take some compressed air and blow around those plugs, pull the plugs out. How bad do they look? Not terrible. That one wasn't in very far. 
Oh, a longer one. Oh, don't strip. Mm, doesn't feel good. Mm. Yep. Well, not much you're gonna do there. Well, I guess we haven't broke one of those off yet. Maybe we have. How's that? Gunky. Well, it's got a sediment bowl on the fuel pump. On top, too. And a sediment up top. Yeah, the electrodes in there. So we got the distributor cap off, and everything looks pretty much new in there. How's the rotor look? Well, that's really sloppy on there. I'm guessing he put all that stuff on right before he parked it. AL79. Even got the standard part number on it. I wonder if that sloppiness is why it's it's hitting low on the towers. It's a cute little cap. Yeah, I'll put that back on there. That's a little crusty. Points are? Yeah. yeah that's probably from just humidity. Well, old man wisdom says we're gonna leave this soak for a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this wheel and tire package off. Put a tube in it so it rolls easy. So I can kick it out of here when we give up on it. Right, Duff? No comment. What bolt pattern is it gonna be? Four and a half. So most of the four wheel drive Jeeps are five on five and a half bolt pattern, same as early Fords. This is five on four and a half, which is like 49 and later Fords and Mopars. Uh, you can see the L on there because they're left hand threads, but also these lug nuts got notches in them for the left hand thread. Similar to what your acetylene tank has, just like so. Your worthless knowledge for the day. And he's got some different hubcap clips. Nothing I've ever seen before. How about you, Duff? Clips metal tabs way out on the outside out here so you can run a bigger hubcap. I guess curiosity got the best of the old man. He was following the heater hoses in here. And I guess there's a cute little heater box that sits underneath the seat. And then this is the head unit for the AM radio as well and the speaker motorola yeah tuner oh it's an overdrive even and this is for the heater i'm guessing yep some poor birdie lost its life in here So there's the bottom of the radiator hose. I would say the cooling system is going to need a good flushing. Never seen a sediment bowl with a filter in it, and the old man says that's a sintered bronze filter. Look, some of the, uh, oh, it's even got a spring in there to hold up. Some of the quadra jets have those too. Yeah, in line though. I mean, in line, small ones. It's even got an early PCV crankcase that's hooked up to the uh, carburetor. <laughs> What's your suggestion for getting this head off? Without ruining anything. You want me to pry while you tap? Yeah, it can't hurt. Come 
little bit. Oh, movement. Don't go too far. Slide something in there and then try to get the back loose. Let's get those washers off there that they can't help. I didn't even think there was any. Well, the good news is we didn't break any valves somehow. A lot of carbon, a little bit of a ring ridge, spark plug, oh yeah the electrode's still on it, she was running pretty rich, look at that all that crap could have been in there from certain 20 years too, but yeah, she's got a lot of junk in the cooling, well let's blow the snot out of there, throw some lube at it, see what happens. There's some cute little pistons. You know anything about this engine? Was it overhauled or anything? I don't know of anything like that. Well, you would have had a boring bar back then and stuff. You could have oh, done yeah. that yourself, I suppose. Portable crankshaft grinder. So now we got it in first gear. I'm gonna rock her back and forth. Let's see if anything breaks loose. Not looking good. Cylinders ain't all rusty or nothing. No. <laughs> Not a rod hanging through the side of the block, is there? Not that I can see. Or the oil pan. Now what do you want to try? Yet. All the valves are even moving. Yep. Well, so far. Oh, intake on number two. Okay, stop. Let's spray those valves. Well, I bet we can just throw a battery in it, huh? I doubt it. You think so? No. Keith Benoit, we're gonna need some more croil if this keeps up. Oh, you hear that clunk? Yeah, is that good or bad? Well, it can't be good. That valve did come, I think it's set. Does that valve come up just the hair more? You gonna fix that valve? You gonna break it? No, I'll let you do that. <laughs> you got all the experience. Well, that's gonna end the day here at Mortsky Repair. You guess you gotta hit it with the ball end. That's what the experts say. <laughs> right before it breaks. 
Yeah, I'll do it like that. Well, it seems like when you get to a certain point, it just stops wanting to roll over. I suppose you could hook up a battery and spin the shit out of it. That's what I mean. I wonder if it would. But it, why can't we get it to just continuously? Because there's no compression or nothing, you know? Yeah. Easier. That was dumb, huh? Check tip of the day, if you're rolling something over, put it in third, not first. Stuck up now. I was just checking to make sure that they're all moving and that's the only one I think it is, isn't it? Yep, that I can see. Well, that's going to the starter, so we're calling that positive. And this battery is too big. Must be six volt. Positive ground. We're hooking it up backwards. Oh, it's got a foot starter yeah, in it. Yeah, it does. Great. So this thing's got a foot starter switch, so we can't use the loser switch. So you know where the foot starter's at? Looks like it's way up higher. Right there. That guy. Oh, okay. It didn't look far enough. Boy, how would you push the gas and that at the same time? Have the brake on, a little bit of gas, and that's like maybe three feet. Well, usually they're close to the gas pedal. That thing, you better have big, big feet. All right. Well, I'll hook up a battery cable here. Let's see what happens. All oh, these cables are not good. Well, give her a whirl. Out of gear? Yep. Okay. You gotta push it in further. I don't think it's moving far enough up here. Well, it's. Yeah. So it's not fully engaging via the foot linkage, so I don't know if something just needs lubed up or adjusted, but I'm gonna try just moving it by hand up here. Well, six o'clock, supper time. The whistle just blew right duff. Let's see if she turns over now. Oh, let's try it. I can't imagine this battery cable would be an issue. There she goes. Don't want the smoke out. Looks like all of our valves are doing valve things. We just got, looks like, what's that? The ex intake? Intake two. On number two. You can tell that because it's on the number two cylinder and it's connected to the intake. These two right here. Our intakes. So, so we can't break it off. Waited until we got the exhaust valve open on number two. So that way you know that the cam isn't on that valve because you don't want to be beating on it against the cam. It's like beating your head against the wall. Ask me how I know. Well, out of gear. Well, it should be out of gear. Out of gear yeah. Well, maybe just uh, bump that starter. The Leatherman wife. Well, keep doing it till that one's got some daylight in there. There we go. I only bought 642 more times of that. Yep. Watch your arm. Watch your wrist. Oh. It was at this moment that he knew. He f Let's give it some rubs and put your hammer handle in there. All these years of Morse code are finally paying off for you. Try to 
think it's got it, didn't it? That's damn close. Good enough for who it's for, right? Yeah. Besides that, it's going to soak a little bit and it'll get even better. Well, should we see if we can fix the spark plug? Oh, you want to spin it out this way or out that way? Let's try coming. This way? That's what I was thinking, this way, because like you said, it snapped off on the top from water sitting in there. Yeah, the spark plug goes in the head and that's a big bird bath. Bird baths. She's a Jeep by Willys. Even tells you what to set your tap it at. Intake 16 thou, exhaust 16 thou, firing order 1342. All the information you need to know right there. I like these square sided ones. They call them screw extractors, but the rest of the world calls them easy out. Never mind that they're made by Napa. Seems like they bite better than the twist style hex, whatever. Another cool tool I got, I think these are made by Lyle. They got a square drive in there. So they fit right over these so you don't have to use a crescent wrench or a wrench. How neat is that? How neat is that? So we're gonna clean up this gasket service on the super scraper, but before we do that, and before we do our head gasket in a can, we gotta get this fitting out of here because I snapped it off, prying it out. And we're gonna bypass the heater core for now because it doesn't have a top and it's 20 degrees out and the wind's blowing 50 miles an hour. So that's like negative 142 and 98 kilometers per hour for you in Kanakistan. All right. I'm gonna try to get this out, hope it don't snap off. If not, we'll use the same process to get that out as we did to get the spark plug remnants out. What are the odds this actually comes out? We should probably heat it up first, but we're not gonna. Oh, I wish we had vice on our stump. Now we're thinking with our dipstick, Jimmy. Oh yeah. Just the way I like it. See, if I would have put that head on and went to do that, they would have snapped off for sure. And there would be fighting up against the firewall, taking that out. So I always think with your dipstick, kids. The old man took off for the night. We were talking about this thing. The head's full of crap. The block's full of crap. So this thing's probably going to need to be hot tanked. And Grandpa did say that it was running hot. It was kind of part of the reason they parked it. So, no surprise. We're going to try to clean out as much crap as we can, but we're going to have to address it sometime. Right, Duff? Not today, though, because it's too cold to have to worry about overheating. Cross that bridge when we get there. Pudding would surely paint this thing. So there's a thermostat in there that we should address while we're at it. I see no reason not to snap some more bolts off. Get yourself a stump. They're way better than a workbench. So versatile. Adjustable height. You just get your chainsaw. Comment down below if you got a stump that you use. I should name it. Oh, I already did. It's stumpy. Lieutenant Dan, we should name it. Lieutenant Dan, you ain't got no legs. Thought I'd try out my sea legs. But well, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. Oh, I knew it. Knew it. Well, glad we did it here. And not when it was. On the engine. Awesome. This one's gonna snap too. Two out of three ain't bad. Where's the tap, tap, tap -a -roo?
Yep. How does that even come out of there? I'm gonna be able to. Oh, they're even doubled up. We got two gaskets to use. If one's no good. I guess I can't even complain about any of the work on this thing because it was my family that probably did it. Most likely my grandfather. That thermostat is shot. I never seen a thermostat that bad before. It's like deteriorated down inside somehow. Yeah, so it looks like there's like a tin shield that goes around this that we got to get out of there yet. It looks like some big elaborate thermostat. Yeah, so like this shield goes around the thermostat. Oh yeah, now we get more snapped off bolts to deal with. Perfect. Walk it right out. Sweet. Again, that wouldn't have went that easy if it was in the engine. Man. Quick blow jig. Ready to go back on, maybe. So now same thing on the engine side, probably pull that head gasket off so that we can head gasket and can it, clean up that surface. And then we're gonna try to get as much of the debris as we can out of that block, but there's not much hope. It's probably gonna have to be hot tanked or at least cycled with some type of acid. I'm sure you guys all have comments on what to do, just like on my Model A, which I, haven't addressed at this point yet either. Oh, is this head gasket even gonna wanna come off? Maybe. Why is it hanging up right there? Oh, it's because I'm splitting the head gasket in the middle. Whoopsies. Don't tell dad. Well, I don't see any marks on the pistons, so I don't think it's ever been bored. It could have. 60,000 miles, she's probably original. Oh my. I'll grab a mag, you'd be proud. Rebuilding head gaskets. All right, maybe not. He'd just be glad we're getting something going. And not spending any money doing it. Cause he was from the old country, that's what he'd always say. Back in the old country. Yeah, they made stuff out of nothing. Oh, Grandpa would be glad I'm at least not huffing paint on purpose. Oh, I hear gold stuff. This is the good stuff. Ah! Five second rule. That counts on head gaskets too, right? I don't even know where we left off. We're just gonna give it a good old douche in here. When your man's in a coma from your panty aroma, summer's eve. <laughs> douche. Color good. Nope, that was the side we left off on. Found it. It's much like buttered toast. If you drop it, the side you just painted on a head gasket, now it's the side that's going to hit the ground. It's a proven theory. Back. Alright, let's slammy-bammy this son of a biscuit on without pinching my finger. 
go in your home. Oh, goes on way better after we reamed out them holes. Well, now I guess we should find the torque specs. You got those for me, Wes? All right, the counter shaft nut. It's torqued to 120 foot-pounds. Come on, baby. It was gonna really bother me if I couldn't find that nut. I hate the look of a new nut with a bunch of other garbage, even though that's gonna be like a new fitting. And we'll find a used bolt for that. Well, we're just gonna go with common sense here and start in the middle and work our way around and click her to a few ugga duggas. Well, let's do a compression test before we start looking for spark and fuel and all that good stuff. What do you say about that? Damn, that thing's hitting like 70. That was way above expectations. Oh, we need to chase the threads on that one. Looks like about 50. But again, this thing isn't threaded in all the way on that hole. Looks like about 60. Oh yeah, that number two, not only was the spark plug snapped off, that was one of the sticky valves, so of course that's gonna be the cylinder that's gonna give us troubles. Looks like about 55 there. Sounds like this water pump's making a horrible racket. I can't imagine there's any gunk inside of that thing either. Okay, we'll address that. Never. Water pumps, we don't need those stinking water pumps. So I don't know why we just did a compression check, just for S's and G's, I guess. Now we gotta get spark, uh, fuel. I'm guessing we're just gonna drizzle gas down that and call that good enough for that. So, let's uh, see if we can get some sparkage. I'm gonna go find a 12 volt coil and we're gonna bypass most of this wiring. We'll just use this one wire between the coil and the distributor and abandon everything else because this all looks like a major fire hazard. So we got our mystery coil that's 12 volts. We have a random coil wire and then we'll take and we'll hook this power wire up to the coil into our crappy connection on the battery. Now we'll see if we got spark when it turns over, but I bet we don't. What if we uh, bump over a hair? Give it the old Morsky flick. Nothing! Let's clean them up a bit. Let's unhook the power before we do that though. We're going to use the old Hansi point file. Give them a couple flicks. Looks like they're closing. Looks like they're opening too. It's sparking now, so maybe. Well, cheese and rice. By the power of Grayskull. Ow! Yep! It's got spark. Let's do it again. Ah! I don't know why it's shocking me. Son of a biscuit. It's working. Take my word for it. I'm not going to give you the light show. So, uh, yeah. Let's uh, hook that up to something so it doesn't electrocute me. Dang it. That is violent. Let's put some spark plugs in and give her some gas. This thing's going to go. Man. I need a beer after that. Wow. Crap would be proud. We got some uh, vintage champion spark plugs here. This thing should have J8s or J8Cs. These are sixes. The old man and I were arguing earlier. Not arguing. Uh, I think sixes are hotter. He thinks sixes are colder than eight, but they're gonna work because that's what we got. And the ones that came out of here. Or, uh, not good. One of them's busted off. 
Is there a date on here? This thing's got to be from the 70s. No date. Whatever. We'll never know. These were the days when your spark plugs came wrapped in the same cellophane as your cigarettes did. I don't even know what cigarettes come wrapped in these days. But spark plugs, they don't have cellophane. What are you growling about over there? Oh, you're an angry puppy tonight, huh? I don't know what's got in the duff. What are you all fired up about? Nothing? Can we get this thing running yet tonight? I don't know, it's getting light. Gap them. We don't need no stinking gaps. These things were built to win world wars. We ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right. Moment of truth. See, this thread's in. Not good, but not bad. Always remember to put your rotor on before you put your distributor cap on. Oh, these wires are so bad. The inside of the cap looks pretty good. So I guess we just gotta drizzle some gas in it, see if it pops off. I mean, it's it's never that easy, but kind of wish the old man was here to see this because he hasn't seen this thing running. Holy crap, forty six years. Pretty cool moment. We'll see what happens. It's probably not gonna start. I mean, I gotta I got be more upbeat. That's what the guys say in the comments or, or the folks say in the comments below. So I'm I, I'm sure it's gonna take right off. Here we go, this is gonna be a lot of fun. It's pretty cool. This is my grandpa's rig. And uh, I spent a lot of time with my grandpa growing up. I'm gonna try not to get all choked up here, but both my grandpas were a, a big part of my life. But my dad's dad, was uh, a huge part in what I do. He was a big car guy. He started a repair shop in 1946. My uncle still runs it. That's where my dad learned to work on cars. All summer long, I followed him around like uh, his shadow. We went to auction sales. Uh, he was big into like Model Ts and like the brass era, early stuff. Uh, later on in his life, my dad and my uncles kind of got him to the hot rods. Stuff like that kind of converted him over, but he still loved the old wood spoke wheels and Model Ts and some of the Model A stuff. Um, but you know, that's 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 how we earned a living was getting stuff like this running. So I'm sure there's a story behind this. We're trying to figure out what it is because Dad really never knew because it was just kind of an old car that was around. Like I said, this thing's been in hiding for basically 30 years. We knew about the car, but we just was out of sight, out of mind. But yeah, my, uh, my grandpa was a big part of my life. I'm not going to say he taught me everything I knew, but uh, we spent a lot of time together and he taught me a lot of stuff about these old cars and watched him drink a lot of these. I don't think I was old enough to, to drink when my grandpa died, so I probably never got to have a beer with grandpa, so here's to you, Meg. But I watched him drink quite a few of them. He, he liked to tip a few back, but he was responsible, you know, just like me. I uh, kind of wish uh, he could be here to enjoy this, and my dad as well. All right, back to the shenanigans, me being an idiot. No more seriousness. Just just fun, happy Marsky stuff. All right, so first time this thing's uh, firing in 46 years. Let's uh, see what happens. Oh, it's already running out the bottom of that carburetor. She gonna need a rebuild. It's gonna have a vacuum leak too, because I don't have the vacuum advance hooked up. See if it pops off. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Just like that. Right into the moon. I think sounds pretty good. A little dust flying around here. I would uh, say Grandpa's looking down on me right now, smiling, just like I am, so it's pretty cool. I wish uh, the old man was here right now, but he'll get to see it soon enough. We got a bunch of stuff to wrap up, but I got to get off camera so uh, I don't get all choked up, and I need a beer to celebrate, so here's you, Gramps. I can't wait to drive this thing. Holy crap, she's a freaking haze back there. We didn't get uh, 
too much out of the tailpipe, just a little bit of rust. No critters, thankfully. A couple of flies, but no mouse poopies, so that's good. Look at this. We even got 20, 25 pounds of oil pressure. Ain't even smoking that much. <clears throat> Not much blow by, good oil pressure. I think we go well through the carb and then hopefully we can resolve the cooling issue, but I think that's just gonna take a lot of flushing. Right, Duff? You don't flush. You're a smart dog, go outside. And uh, like I said, that water pump sounds real angry, or maybe it's the generator, but we can narrow that down. Gotta find a thermostat. All that good stuff. Get rid of this stinking flexi hose. Sorry, Grandpa. That's got to go. Oil change. All that good stuff. But we got this thing running. I'm super excited. Thing's been off the road 46 years. Uh, it's my grandpa's car. My dad was the last one to drive it. My mom was with him. A couple of their classmates are driving around doing Chinese fire drills. He's talking about. If you don't know what a Chinese fire drill is? Maybe it's only a Midwest thing. But uh, look it up. Whatever. Sound like a hoot. It's, it's a pretty momentous occasion to uh, have this thing running again. We'll drink to that. And uh, I think we're shutting her down for the night. What do you think, Duff? He kind of cares. We're going to open up the doors, bring the bobcat in. We just got a bunch of snow, so let the bobcat thaw out. Probably going to have to lose some snow in the morning. See you guys tomorrow. Three weeks later. Well, Duff, everybody's asking. So, uh... Jeepster, I guess we better get back after it. Been a couple week hiatus. We scrounged up some new parts. Boom tube gave us a chunk of uh, inch and a half exhaust tubing to make a new radmiator hose. What do we got here? And we got some new parts here. I don't even know what we ordered. Uh, we are supposed to get a tailpipe, but they didn't have that. Oh, there's my green jumper wire I've been looking for. We got a new water pump, belt, fuel pump, carb kit, canister oil filter. Yeah, when you get them from the Jeepster, man, they come in Ziploc bags, I guess. Plug wires, brake parts, wheel seals, brake hoses, thermostat gasket, thermostat, plugs, points, radmiator hoses, and a master cylinder. And probably some other miscellaneous pieces of goodness in your Oh, I think a fuel line too. And new tires, stuff says. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll this thing out after. Put some air in that tire. Roll it out here in the open so we can work on it. Right? Because it's not going to be much fun working in here around all my garbage. I guess we should put that small block in something. In that new radiator in the blazer. And figure out why we set that radiator in here and put those new tires on the ramp truck. Gosh, so many people hound us about the ramp truck. Anyway, Jeepster things. We're getting back on it. Let's do this, Duff. So it looks like Grandpa had some wide white Goodyear radials on there. I don't know if you call it a wide white. 235, 75, 15. The old man, he liked the same size, or liked that size, so we got the next closest thing. Oh, not a 17.5. We got these master crafts here. And we're going white wall out. That's like a one inch white wall versus like a two and a quarter there, so it is what it is. I think these tires were like 70 bucks a piece versus to get something like that is like 200 bucks a piece, so. On a budget here, right, Duff? All right, let's uh, do the tire mountain funness on the old Coats 5060E. Good times. Now that we got these bad boys mounted up, let me stick them on the old Coats 850 here and spin them around, balance them. Not really much to see here, but 
I think we're just gonna put the weights on the inside because that's what I like, even though these are all rusty. My old man wanted me to break them down. He was gonna blast them and paint them, but I knew that that would just snowball into him. Finding busted clips and looking for better rims on the internet and a mismatched one, and that would be an 18 month ordeal. So yeah, he likes to take stuff apart and never put it back together. Not that I'm much better, but let's just get it on the road and then he can address that as we go. Balance time, here we go. I think we're gonna call her for tonight. I'm mowing tires, that's, that's work, even with the machine. Duff's having a midnight snack. I'm gonna have a sandwich myself. Hopefully tomorrow we'll uh, rip into some brakes. Maybe a fuel tank. How's that uh, midnight snack of kibbles and bits there, duffel up, I guess? Good, he says. Well, we got some brake parts. I think Rock Auto finally did us wrong. And uh, the front brake hoses that they sent are about yay long. But I think that's the rear hose, which we only got one of. And that looks close, so we'll see if that works. Might have to order another one. I'm sure they were like six bucks a piece, so really out. I'm gonna pop the dust cap off, the cotter key, and the castle nut, and then we're just gonna slide that whole brake drum hub assembly off, and everything is gonna go easy peasy. Bearings are gonna look great. We're not even gonna clean them up and pack them and put the new wheel seals in, and uh, brakes are gonna look good. Everything's gonna go swimmingly. Right, duffel up, I guess? Yeah, right. So, I got all the tools I need right here, guaranteed. No more trips back to the toolbox. Just kidding. But we'll forget something. Weird. No brake fluid came out. Where's that weeble wobble at? Oh man. So uh, too many years of Jeep things. And the kingpins are wore out. We don't have parts for that, so Dad, address that someday. Put kingpins in it. Don't worry about those nice new tires. Dang it. All right. Moving on. Well, at least they're a tapered roller bearing instead of a super expensive oddball ball bearing. Why isn't that not come off? I'm up on the brakes. Oh, there we go. Lots of grease in there. I think we're just gonna leave that. Like I said, my dad's gonna tear this apart and do kingpins, which I know he will, cause he's gonna do shocks and bushings and he has to have everything absolutely perfect. These drums are a little bit grooved up. So, uh, I don't know if you can turn them or not, if there's enough material, but they'll be fine for what we're gonna do. There's plenty of material on these shoes. Oh man, look at this. All you kids with your newfangled slotted rotors. That's right. We got slotted shoes back here in 1949 or whatever. I have never seen that. Where shoes have those. Is that a Jeep thing? If it is, I guess I don't understand. So like I said, there's a lot of material on these things. And really, the only thing that ever goes bad with brakes is the hydraulic part. So, well not the hydraulic part, but the rubber part. So we're gonna put a new hose on, this guy, and then we're gonna put a new wheel cylinder in because that's got rubber seals in it. And then we'll do the master cylinder. And uh, that should be good. Man, you're just getting after that rawhide over there, making all kinds of noise. The shoes are fine, and really it'd be a waste to put shoes on this without turning the drums because they're grooved up a little bit. So then it just snowballs. So we're just gonna put it together just good enough so it works. Right, Duff? You have zero interest in me, or a Jeep right now. Well, it looks like our new wheel cylinder is correct anyway. These brakes are a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. I believe they're called a Bendix style is what you usually see with the uh, self-adjuster down at the bottom. These don't have a self-adjuster at the bottom. I think they call these a Huck style brake. But basically, there's two bolts that come through the back side here, and they're uh, connected to an eccentric, which is like an offset bolt. 
So you go ahead and you turn that set screw or adjustment screw eccentric and that moves the bottoms of your brake shoes in and out so that they run true against your brake drum. So self adjusters obviously are self adjusting. These, you're, you know, you're supposed to adjust them every time you change oil or whatever. We'll uh, probably show you how to adjust that after a bit here. Just kidding, I'll forget. And yeah, they don't have the hold down pins with the springs on them. They just slide into these little retainers here. They're just kind of an all around different brake. And that's kind of why they got rid of them because a lot more maintenance to them. And people don't like maintenance. All right, let's quit yakking and get this thing put back together. Plenty of grease in there. Grease looks good. That's the good old stuff. Oh yeah. There we go. One corner done. And we only had to go back to the toolbox twice. All right, three more to go. Oh yeah. Imagine that, this kingpin is wasted over here too. Thinks this one's even worse. Way bad. So that's pretty much gonna wrap up the front. Duff finally finished his rawhide. Uh, I need to put a hose on there if we ever get a new one or if we decide to uh, put that used one back on there. But I'm gonna show you this shock, how it works and or does not work. So here's your upper control arm. Every time you hit a bump, that goes up and down. Here's the bottom of your spindle. Every time you hit a bump, that goes up and down. Usually your shock is connected to your spindle I'll we'll point to the spindle, Duff. Yep, right there. It's connected to your spindle. And then, yeah, yeah, right there at the spindle. <laughs> and uh, the other end of your shock is connected to your frame so that as your spindle goes up and down, or your control arm, the top of the shock stays stationary so your shock does shocking things. Gosh dang it, Duff. You just want all the attention. So, just for science, we're gonna show you how little this thing moves. So we're gonna take this tape measure here. It's hard to run without thumbs, Duff. And this thing is currently about 14 and a half inches to the center of the spindle off the ground. And the length of this spindle is about, we'll say four and three quarter. And it's on jack stands, because safety third. So now we'll jack this thing up until it's just off the jack stand. We'll see how much that moved. Holy buckets, it moved a lot more than I thought it would. It moved to about two and three quarter. So it moved about two inches. And out here, we're at 19 and a half. So actually, these are a little bit more efficient than I thought they would be. I know on the old Mopars, like that 49 Dodger just worked on, they don't do a whole lot. But I still think this would be a lot more effective if you made a bracket kind of came off this upper control arm here so that it stays stationary. And then maybe put a gosh darn bolt on there instead of a cotter key. Keeping it cheap, Jeep. You know what Jeep stands for. Just empty every pocket or just everybody else's parts. Those are the only two I know. I'm sure there's a bunch of other ones. All right, onto the back. You gonna lecture him on rear brakes? Yes, Professor Duff. So the rear brakes, are pressed down to the hub. Well, the hub is uh, tapered, as is the axle. So we gotta take the cotter key out, and then we take that nut off, and then we gotta use our uh, handy dandy hub puller. Pull the hub off, get the brakes. It's just gonna be that easy, right, Duff? All right, let's do this. Yeah! 
Probably wants another rawhide. 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 Too big. Inch and a quarter. Just right. Sure hope this is right hand thread. Oh yeah. And I'm sure Watch West work would tell us that you need to torque that to some infinite amount. So you can see it's got a little keyway there and a keyway there. So uh, basically that keyway, you know, you talk about like a 35 spline axle. Well, these are a single spline axle. Look at how puny that axle tube is. Just a little guy. He just a little guy. Some Jeep guy is going to be like, that's a Dana 18. Those things was great. Yeah, okay. Oh. Goes nothing. Give her a little tap, tap, tap a -roo. Just tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. All right. This is where you pucker. There she go. Oh yeah. Yeah, without one of these pullers, you ain't getting these things off. Ooh. Ew. Looks like uh, she needs an axle seal. Real bad. And the park brakes deleted. Oh my gosh. So here's a case where you put new shoes on because you're never gonna get that oil out of those shoes. We're not gonna hurt those shoes at all by doing what we're doing. So I'm just gonna let the old man know that he needs to put an axle seal in and uh, he needs to buy some new shoes. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Daddy need new shoes. There you can see the keyway. And I think why this thing is so bad is that's where the seal rides and it's all grooved up. Is the seal even there? I think it's just like a felt seal is all it is. And it just rides on the end of there. So they probably never sealed up real great. Well, good enough for who it's for. Man, that's not good. Well, the saga continues because that is not the right wheel cylinder. Looks like this one's got a bigger cup on this end than on this end, so. Back to the drawing boards. Oh man, I hate waiting for parts. Okay, so I'm not having much luck finding this wheel cylinder with this staggered bolt pattern for the rear on the old Rock Auto. And uh, I found it at some other sites. Uh, the Jeepster man, guy, dude, professional, he's got some. But they're, uh, Freaking 35 bucks a piece and probably a week or two out. So we're gonna see if we can clean this one up and if I can uh, patch it together with new old stock garbage we got on the shelf because these cups are just pretty generic. What are these, a seven ace bore? I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, see what the bore looks like. And if the bore is decent, then we'll see if we can find some new cups. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Huh, is there a part number on there? That would be cool. Wagner Lockheed. Uh, TC-5994 X155. USA, good stuff. That uh, brake fluid in there, or whatever that is, not good stuff. All right, cleanup time. Oh, I need a parts cleaner guy. Dog, do you clean parts? Yeah, that's a big negatory. He says it's bedtime. The good news is the bore actually cleaned up surprisingly well. So did the pistons, not bad. The bad news is this thing is a seven ace bore. Yep, mic'd her out. So yeah, that doesn't fit. So then I thought we could just take our uh, wheel cylinder that doesn't fit. We just steal the cups and pistons out of that. 
but no, that's three quarter inch bore. So we're gonna have to order parts. Or uh, see if we can scrounge up some seven ace cups that I don't have on hand. Dang it. Well, sandwich time. Punching out. Well, we didn't find any wheel cylinder cups, did we Duff? We're gonna tear the other side apart. We did get some ordered, and uh, just to make sure that there's nothing uh, over there that we're going to miss out on. And we're going to take that brake hose off and make sure it's the same from front to back. And Duff's going to rub up against all the grease that's on that backing plate. I mean, come on. You got to look like you live in squalor, a dirt ball. Like me, don't rub up against that stuff. So yeah, I'm going to rip into the brakes back here just to make sure everything that we did order is going to fit. And then I think while we're under there, maybe we'll uh, see if we can drop fuel tank. Or I'll do brakes, you do the fuel tank. I do the fuel tank, you do the brakes? Okay, I'll crawl underneath through all of it and you just lick me in the face looking for attention. Solid plan. You're the best. Two paws up. Well, this side looks a heck of a lot drier than the other side. Since we're gonna have all the tools out, we'll probably uh, put axle seals in both sides when we do it. And uh, you're gonna buy four brake shoes. You might as well put this side in too. At that time, but right now, we're just focusing on wheel cylinders. Getting it to slow down just a little bit. Oh, she's got the grooved rear brakes as well. High performance the old Jeepster was. Of course that line wants to twist off, so I'll have to work that a little bit. Put some croil on it. Well, since didn't find any surprises here, I think I'm gonna go underneath my croil and my line wrench. And we'll see if we can't get that rear brake hose off. Maybe we'll even blow out the brake lines because that other side looks pretty sludgy. I didn't get much out of here. Yeah, let's clean them up a bit. Finally! Thanks, Mr. Locking Players. You're the best. Well, I guess we're not salvaging that one. Well, the good news is it is surprisingly solid underneath here. Must have been a rear seat heater. Of course, looks like that hole was cut with a dull chisel. So that was not original. Like the floor pans are even shiny there. Look at these weird drive shafts. It's got like a slider at the front and a slider at the back. It'd be uh, fun to swap an engine in here because you have to figure all that out. That's like I beam for the cross member. That's like three eighths of an inch thick. That's some girthy stuff, Duff. There's the overdrive solenoid. There's the overdrive disengage lever, which was disengaged. We'll worry about that later. But at least she's super solid. Even quite a bit of undercoating. Not bad for sitting in a uh, dirt floor building for many, 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 many years. You can see how scaly everything is. All right, let's go see if that brake hose is the same as the front ones, and then we'll go to the fuel tank. Let's see what other kind of janky stuff. Oh, heater hose clamp holding the tailpipe. Is there no muffler on here? Oh, I bet it was back there and it rotted off. Grandpa's a hot rodder, had her straight piped. Good news, the front brake hose and the rear brake hose are the same. Good work, Jeep. Yeah, Duff bows down to you. Yeah, lay right on the floor drain. Hide all the sins that have gotten into that thing. How dare you! We're doing pretty good here for pissing Greta off today. So I'm gonna blow out these brake hoses. Well, not this one. That one's 
getting thrown out instead of blown out. And then we're gonna give a blow job to the uh, brake lines. Get those all cleared up. And then we'll go on to the fuel tank. We should blow those lines out too. What do you say, Duffel up, I guess? Good call. Not impressed. So we blew out the brake line on that side. And look what came out on this side. Oh, all over that nice crate engine. And up the wall. Aren't you glad we blew that out, Duff? Yeah, it would have been smarter if we to put a beer box right there to catch all that. But I didn't think there would be that much crud in there. Well, when we lose the shop, somebody else can clean that up. Right? So, I guess we'll uh, go drop the master cylinder. I'm giving up on the fuel tank thing for now. I'm going to keep sticking with the brakes because we're doing such a swimming job at that. I'm guessing this... Oh, look at this! Fival! What are you doing in there? Taking a nap? Duff. You got a friend. He's a sleepy friend, though. All right, back to work. So here's our master cylinder. It's got two bolts holding it on. It looks like the push rod stays with the pedal, so we don't have to worry about taking that off. Also looks like you can grease the pivot points, and uh, that hasn't been done ever, probably. And it's got the brake pressure switch holds a banjo bolt, which holds all of our fittings, so we gotta get that out. I got the bullet connectors out of there, so we can start spinning that out. Actually, I started spinning it, so we'll get that out of there. And then the lines should be unhooked, and we should just have to take those two 3S bolts that are clamping it to the frame out. Usually they're underneath the floor. This one's kinda up in the engine bay up here by the steering box. It's a little bit different, huh, Duff? Yeah. That's what I think. Master cylinders under the floor are no fun to work on. Well, man, that's an aluminum master cylinder. As you can tell by the corrosion. This one's cast iron. This is like some race car stuff right here. I mean, Willwood probably made it. I'm gonna have to save that. Just keep it all numbers matching. Interesting. Looks like our bolt patterns are the same. Dimensionally the same. Our single port is the same. I mean, you could, I saw you can get a disc brake kit for this thing from, what is it, Jeepster Man or Mr. Jeepster or whatever. But just the front disc brakes are like a thousand bucks. And then if you're going to do that, you should put a dual reservoir master cylinder, which I'm all for dual reservoir master cylinders, but this thing would be a real pain to adapt a dual reservoir master cylinder that usually bolts this way onto here. But who knows, maybe somebody makes a kit, but this thing's going to be slow enough. We don't have to worry about it. Also, they spelled brake right on the uh, Raybestos. Brake fluid. Except for its lunch break instead of all crap, I want to stop before I go over this embankment break. Quality with a K right there. And it's, uh, we gotta use dot three quarter brake fluid there, duffel up, I guess. We know it's dot three or dot four. We're dot three type of guys. I'm gonna sneak this up there. We're definitely not gonna bench bleed it because we don't do that. Well, since these things go bad so often, and they're pretty common on this old stuff, these pressure switches for the brakes. I happen to have one on hand. I think it's actually, well, they're all probably the same. They might have a little bit different pressures, but I think these are from like 47 to 53 Chevy pickups, maybe. I don't know. International's used them. Ford's used them well into the 60s, I think. This has female bullet connectors. This has male. This thing's got some really crappy cloth wiring on it, so... Duff says just put that on there and we'll rewire it if we get to the point of needing brake lights. Now we got a new one on there. This one can go in the trash. All right, let's uh, slam that son of a biscuit on there. You're a lot of help tonight there, Duffel up, I guess. Oh, now you're gonna go back to work? Yeah, that's what I figured. You just wanted your head scratched. 
We got the master in place. There is some adjustment on this push rod, so if we do need to adjust it a little bit more for throw, we can do that. It looks like the clutch linkage here is worn pretty good. You can see daylight on the back side of that hole. But yeah, you can see all the sludge that we blew out of those lines when we blew air back through them. And this banjo bolt is full of crud. So I think I'm going to clean that out and then I'm going to thread that on there and get the lines off just to use that to hold them. And then we're going to clean that banjo fitting out. And then I think I'm going to try blowing through the lines the other direction too, just because there's so much crud in these brake lines. And it looks like I forgot to clamp that overdrive cable behind that bolt. So I'm going to take that apart again, because we like doing things twice. Duff said it occurred to him that uh, some of the whippersnappers who watch might not know what a banjo fitting is. So this is a banjo fitting. This one kind of looks like a little V-twin Harley, but it's because it's kind of like a banjo if you just take that round part there. No, not that type of banjo. So, yeah, they kind of look like a banjo. This is a double fitting, so if it was a single fitting, it would look like that. So it kind of looks like a banjo, just a two-string. So, you got your banjo fitting, you got your banjo bolt, then you got these crush washers. So you take your crush washer, you slide it on there. And that crush washer is your seal. Slide it through your banjo fitting, crush washer on the inside. And then you screw this in the end of your master cylinder or whatever you're working on. And then you would hook like your regular brake line with a inverted flare into there. And uh, that's kind of how they work. And then this is that stupid brake switch that threads in the end there. And that's sealed by thread tape, which pipe thread is not great for anything high pressure, especially like brakes, so I don't like them. But pretty much all your late model master cylinders, and I mean late model, that's a pretty loose term. So like in the 60s and 70s, uh, it's just an inverted flare like this that goes into your master cylinder. So there you go. Your worthless knowledge of the day on banjo fittings. Now that I got this cleaned up, I'm gonna go stick this back on the Jeep. Or do you wanna put it on as he looks away? Well, I am having no luck getting air to go through this brake line. I can see some rust in there. So we're gonna take the old Norseman drill bit and we're gonna ream her out a bit. Hog that son of a biscuit out for all of the stopping power. Oh, look at all that rust. Now. Way more gooder. I don't think I've ever uh, blown out a brake line before. I mean, I have, but it's not a common practice for me. Sure glad I did on this thing. Cause that would've fought us. Right, pal? Is that your stamp of approval? Okay. Well, everybody, this seems to like them unboxing videos, so Let's see what this fuel tank looks like. Oh my gosh! It's a big black plastic fuel tank. Oh, it's made in Dubuque, Iowa. MTS Corporation. Oh look, it causes cancer in California. Not anymore, I don't. Made in USA. Oh man. Well, let's stab a sending unit in it. Probably should get the old one out first to make sure this is right. Since it's made in America, in Iowa, oh, the khaki bandit, I'm sure it's just fine. Looks like MTS made this sending unit as well, so hopefully it's compatible. Oh, and we got an extra gasket. Score, plastic float, so we don't have to worry about that going bad. Oh, 
Those bolts look like they were put in shortly before this thing was parked. Do you concur, good sir? All right, Duff says yeah. So there's no straps that hold this thing in here. It's just these two bolts back here, that single one up there. So we're gonna pop that fuel line off and then we're gonna take those three bolts out. And I'm guessing that's the fuel gauge wire just kinda hanging there. So we're probably gonna un untwist that from the cross member and figure out where it's supposed to go under the dash. And then we gotta fish the neck out of the quarter panel because it looks like there's no hose on it. And I think we gotta cut down that neck and use the hose that's provided with our new tank to put that on there. All right, easy peasy. So that about getting the old endoscope in here, showing you what the inside looked like, but I don't think we'll even need to do that. You can hear it. I bet we can even get something to come out with, maybe. Oh. Like I said, Dad said this tank was rusty 45, 46 years ago, so. Can't imagine it resolved itself. I think we're just gonna make a new wire for that because that's definitely not the OG wire. It would have been cloth coated. Not that I'm gonna put a cloth coated one back on it. Then we gotta put a new ground wire on there. The pickup is now here as opposed to being right here where the other one was. And then we gotta cut the neck off of this. Got a little bit to do before we stick it in there. That's what she said. <laughs> It kind of looks like we knocked the vent tube loose, but we don't have anywhere to hook it up anyway, so we're just going to vent it to atmosphere. It won't kick back on us when we're filling up the pump that way. I'm pretty much ready to slide this in. I got a black wire for the ground hooked up to this screw on the sending unit. Usually like black is my go-to for ground, but white, sometimes it's all right to use that too. I'm a poet and didn't even know it. And then green I used for the sending unit because that's what was on there. Green, gas, whatever. Trim the black wire off about two feet. We'll ground that to the frame. I like heat shrink solder eyelets. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm not into uh, wire nuts and the electrical guillotines, what they call scotch locks. And I like using my Wagner heat gun. That way you don't melt everything to smithereens. Looks like a professional is doing it, even though we know definitely no professionals here. Left the green wire long. Uh, we'll fish that up under the dash, up to the gauge. Probably doesn't work, but you know, at least it's there for whoever fixes the gauge if somebody ever should decide to. And then I got about uh, two foot, a quarter inch fuel line here. We got to put a filter in here. I guess we're gonna probably want it at the back because up front you'll see it's kind of got some threaded chunk of hose that goes in there. It's not just like regular rubber hose like this. It's actual threaded stuff. So filter's gonna have to be in the back. It's kind of unfortunate. We could make something work up front. But we're gonna put it in the back. We shouldn't have any filtering issues with the new tank, there might be something that picks up from the beginning, but whatever. And I also don't have a quarter inch fuel filter, I don't think. If I do, it's one of those clear plastic ones. It looks like it should be on a lawnmower to burn that mother trucker to the ground. So, without further ado, let's install a fuel tank. You gonna help? That's what I thought. Running the show. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go up front, put some compressed air. You guys keep an eye on this. See if any uh, goodness comes out of there. See if anything comes out of there. Just a little tiny quarter inch fuel line in here for all of the horsepowers going through that. Oh, and I did find 
one of them lawnmower filters. Wix number 33011. I like these because they fit 5 16 and quarter inch. So if you put them on a 5 16 you can snip that quarter inch off there. Because we're fancy like that. I don't know if anything came out, but it sure stinks. Whatever's in there. I don't see any crud. Got blasted on the Cyclops, so I think we'll hook it up. Good enough for the girls we go with. I'm gonna hook up the ground, fish that wire up there for the fuel gauge, and then we gotta hook up our fuel filler neck as well. So, getting there. Where should we ground this? All right, we got our green wire, ran up to the gas gauge. Well, I mean, it's under the dash. Good enough. I decided to fill the hole on this because I don't want to have to do it later when it's all covered in gas and such. So now we just got to get this to fit. It doesn't look like it lines up quite perfectly with the fuel filler neck on there. So I'm gonna have to get underneath and do a little wrestling. Maybe grease her up a bit. And I think this install is about done. We got to hook up the fuel hose up at the fuel pump, but we got a new fuel pump. So we're just gonna hold off on that. That's the only complaint I got about this, is the fuel filler neck it shoots straight out. It should be up at a little bit of an angle. So, yeah, otherwise not a bad kit. Well, that didn't go too bad. Uh, just kind of went underneath there, gave her the old reach around, and she slid right in there. I don't like how far it sticks out, but that's kind of where the paint line was, so that's how far it was before. So we can always loosen that clamp up, maybe get it to slide in some more. Otherwise, take a little bit off that tube if... Really want to flush her up a bit, but should be good. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet tank. I'll give those guys that. Only thing, uh, yeah, maybe they could put a provision on there for that. I don't know. It's not a breather. It's for when you fill the tank. They don't backsplash on your groin and all over the side of your nice paint job. But I think all they'd have to do is put a little fitting on the top of the tank, like a 5 ace, and then... Uh, Run a tube from that up to here, and then you're not going to have any of that. But what do I know? So I'll do some stuff under the hood now. Where should we start? I'm not going to start with the radiator hoses because I think we're going to have to run the garden hose through this thing a bunch to try to get some of that goodness out of here. So what else we got in this box? We got a tune-up kit. We got some new plugs and wires. Fuel pump. Let's put that fuel pump on it. Let's stick with the fuel system. This one's got the vacuum pump built on it for the wipers. We're not gonna, I mean, we're missing a wiper anyway. The blade's gone on the other side, so they're like 250 bucks. So we just got the standard version that uh, apparently comes with three gaskets from AirTex. Doesn't have that fuel vacuum pump on there. We're gonna take those lines off there and we're gonna have to plug this one on the intake. Should be all right. This is the new fuel hose. See how talking about it's just not regular hose barbs and a chunk of bulk fuel hose it's got these fittings on the end this one's got well it's only got a swivel on one end so you gotta tighten this end first and then tighten that end otherwise you bit a big twist in your hose can't be any worse than that all right fuel pump time This thing here is quite the setup. It's got the sediment bowl built into it. It's got the vacuum pump built into it. And then it's also the fuel pump. This one's got a little bit different arm, but I think it'll be fine. It just runs off an eccentric off the camshaft. So uh, you gotta swap the fittings over. Oh yeah, I think our line will even work. They'll come out in about the same spot. The really weird thing about this is it only had one bolt holding it on. So it had this bolt on this side. And on this side, the return for the oil filter goes through that hole and into the block. That's a little bit different. I think that's just a barb fitting there, and then there's a barb fitting here, and this is just standard bulk, whatever, oil pressure hose or whatever. That's probably why they don't sell it. You can buy this pressure hose, which I don't know why they pinched that off. Wasn't a good idea. I bet it's because this is plugged up, and they were pressurizing oil up here, and it wasn't draining back fast enough. Maybe. 
I don't know. We should uh, take that off and blow it out though. Because we do have a new pressure line. Maybe we take this apart and see what kind of goodness is inside too. I'm sure it's real nice. But yeah, I've never seen that where the bolt retaining the fuel pump is actually the return for the oil filter. Interesting stuff, Jeep. Interesting stuff. So I'm gonna pull that return line off, blow it out, pull this off, swap it out, get our super scraper out, clean up that gasket surface, and we'll swap this son of a biscuit on there. And then the uh, fuel system's pretty much done, other than the carburetor. I don't really know if I wanna tear into that. We haven't really uh, rebuilt the carburetor on here, and I'm kinda all right with that. I'm not a fan of going through all that stuff, especially when they work, and this one kinda worked, didn't it? The old Carter YF. All right. That could work. So here's our new hose versus our old hose. The lengths are about right. This side's got, I believe it's eighth inch pipe thread. And this new hose has a, uh, what is that? An inverted flare, I don't know, quarter inch. And this side's got, Whatever that is, 45 degree AN, Army, Navy, flare, something or other. But dug through the fitting stash and I found a couple of eighth inch pipe to inverted flare, 90 degrees, just like this has got. And just like I took off down there. Small hiccup, but we'll get that swapped out. We don't even have to have a bunch of adapters for all kinds of leaks and such. So we'll slam that on there. Blew this hose out. Wasn't any restriction in there, so that should be good. We need to get that lid off. See what's going on there too. Before we get too far. And that would probably be a good time. In case we gotta take it off. Let's see what's behind door number three. Oh, that didn't sound good. Oh boy, what are we gonna find, Duff? Meh. So far so good. We should probably just take this off the inner fender and clean it up. Well, that's different, huh, Duff? Refill. P40. Oh, man, that thing, she's... You can, like, squish it with your hand. She's pretty deteriorated. I feel like that is part of the uh, issue where that line's kinked off because I think that's supposed to drain back. And uh, clearly it's not draining because it's full. Oh, is it draining now? A little bit. Some nasty stuff. Need a parts washer person to do this stuff so I don't have to do it. Great. So the thickness of this fuel pump mounting surface is uh, significantly less and the other fuel pump, so I had to go find a shorter bolt, which is fine. But then for this guy, for the oil return, we're just gonna get creative and put a jam nut on there and we'll thread it in as far as we can and then tighten that jam nut to hold it. Sound good? Sounds good to me too. I'm not really quite sure how this thing works. Pressurized oil comes in there, filter sits there, and then somehow it has to return here. But the only way I could see that it returns is through the center of this. But that thread is plugged with the cap here. So I'm not sure. See, there is this other fitting here, so that could get moved to here. But I think that's just to drain it for when you clean the sludge out or when you swap filters because that's on the very edge outside here same spot as this so oil would just come in here and sift through there I know these weren't very efficient systems but it seems like they had to have been more efficient than that I don't know but it uh, did an okay job of catching some sludge this thing's been sitting upside down for a half hour and there's still stuff that didn't move until I mixed it up, so 
I'm gonna get that sludge out. It's not quite as bad as that 59 Plymouth Wagon Chelsea, but this thing's definitely got some clogged arteries. All right, finally got this thing fingered out. You can't really read it, but it says outlet right there. So that is in fact the outlet. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, but right there is the hole that's connected to this. So if that gets plugged, you ain't gonna get no oil going back to the engine. Get it all cleaned up. Looks pretty good in there now. So you got this spring, slides in there. Then you slide your replacement canister filter in there. This is a CarQuest 85010 Henshaw in Mexico. That spring pushes it up. This pushes it down. It's got a seal around that lid there. That's about it. Glad we found that little hole. Otherwise, this thing was like an eighth wonder of the world. I was trying to figure out how the heck this thing actually works. Now you know. Well, since we got the fuel system pretty much wrapped up, I did clean up the sediment bowl just a bit here. I think we'll uh, rip into this carbonator. Get that all cleaned up, put our kit in it, and then the fuel system should be wrapped up. Although, I just don't have a good feeling about that fuel pump. I don't know. Instinct, right? So got everything pretty much apart here. Everything came pretty good. This accelerator pump shaft was a little sticky, so we had to put her in the vise to get that out. And then the accelerator pump assembly itself is stuck in there, so we will see if I can't pry that out of there. We gotta scrape this base gasket off. We're gonna put it in this ultrasonic fancy cleaner thing that I've never used before. And uh, I think we're gonna clean it up a little bit beforehand just to try to save on the five dollars worth of pines all we put in there so we'll scrape this gasket off maybe yeah who am i kidding we're just gonna throw it in there i gotta pull this fuel inlet off i need a little bit bigger screwdriver to get the seat out of there for the float and uh yeah i'll be ready to go so we got everything all brushed down here we're gonna throw them in this ultrasonic cleaner so what i got here is a amazon special I'll try to remember to put the link down below. Vivo Home. Yeah. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Got her set to uh, 65 degrees Celsius, which is, what, like 150-ish Fahrenheit? That's one thing I don't like. I wish this was in Fahrenheit, because Celsius, all I know is zero is freezing, and 100 is boiling. And then uh, we got a timer on here. You're not supposed to run this thing for over an hour at a time. And uh, we got a magic concoction in there, 50% pine all, one and a half quarts, and then we got about one and a half quarts of water in there. We're going to throw this in there, see what it does. I did brush her off a bit, so maybe that'll make the cleaning solution a little bit cleaner when we're done. I got this thing hoping I could do quadra bogs, but I feel like a quadra bog ain't going to fit in there. This is the six liter option. Might need a little bit more fluid in there, maybe. And it says you gotta use the basket, you don't just set it on the bottom. And you're supposed to have some space in between stuff so that it uh, can do it whatever it does. Whatever magical stuff this thing does. That's just the top of the carburetor. It'll be fine. So I'm gonna set this thing for a half hour and walk away and go do Something else, ignition tune-ups. This thing is really noisy. Well, not really noisy. I mean, not like air compressor noisy, but it's annoyingly noisy. So if you can set it outside or don't run it in the garage, if you got a small garage, I got a big enough garage where I can go to the other end and work and not go insane. Also, the uh, carburetor kit that I got is not for a YF1 carburetor. I have since labeled it, but I did have 
carburetor kit sitting around for the Bronco, which has a YF1 carburetor on it. So thank goodness they use the same carburetor for 20 years. Look at that crazy uh, accelerator diaphragm, yada, yada, yada. So they say sometimes you got to run it through multiple times. You pull it out, clean it up a little bit, blow the crud off, run it through again. And then obviously we got to put the base in there. Also this base main shaft, she's a little, she's a little sloppy. So ideally a guy should take this apart. And to do that, you uh, take these swedge screws out the butterfly, take the butterfly out, slide the shaft out, and then ream this out and put new bushings in there because you're going to pull vacuum through there and or leak gas through the side. So, I ain't doing that. And then I don't know what we can do about these small parts. I wish they had like a small basket you could put in there, but I'm going to have to put those just regular carb dip or just slam them back in, blow them off, put some carb cleaner on them. So it pays to buy... Well, it doesn't pay to buy the wrong part. It pays to buy new parts and then never put them in because I'll have to get a new one of those to put in the Bronco for whenever we get back to that thing. Check that video if you haven't. All right, we're giving this ultrasonic cleaner the uh, go around, crank her up to 30. You guys can see how loud it is. I mean, it's not terrible loud, but I sure wouldn't want to listen to that all day. Mmm, tasty. I wonder if you can make chicken wings in there. Here's what they look like after sitting in there for a half hour. That inside is good. Outside's got a little crust on it. I think we'll try wiping that off. Outside of this one looks real good though. Inside, not so good. Maybe if we tip this upside. Oh, that's what I bet what it is. This one sat like this. And that other one sat just like that. So we gotta flip it upside down. Hey, we're learning here. I think we'll uh, wipe them off just a bit, run them through again. You can see she's getting a little bit dirty. Came out pretty good inside. Can maybe run it through one more time, but I think it's gonna be good enough. The outside is freaking phenomenal. We go blow this thing off. So we get the rest of the carbonator cleaned up. Be able to slam her together. Yeah, these uh, ultrasonic cleaners are good. A little bit of pine saw and some water. I like it. We need more lemon pledge. It's amazing what a little pine saw will do. Plus it makes the shop smell so good. Not that my word is worth anything to uh, most of you guys and gals, but if you were on the fence about getting one of these ultrasonic cleaners, do it. You won't regret it. These things are good. Make sure you get something bigger than six liters. Get a 12 liter, I don't know what the next biggest size is, but six liters is good enough for, you could probably do some two barrel stuff in there. It's perfect for uh, this one barrel stuff, but if you're gonna do four barrel hollies, quadra bogs, stuff like that, Edelbrox, you're gonna need a bigger one. Let's put this thing back together. I am no carb expert. I just take them apart, put them back together the way that they were. I usually don't set the float level. The only thing I check usually is how many screws the idle mixture screw is in or out. And this one was screwed all the way in, so clearly somebody had been messing with it. So we're just going to put her back together the way it was. Hopefully. We're guaranteed to have extra pieces, because if you don't have extra pieces, you ain't doing it right. You can hear Duff barking in the background, he agrees. Also, these things come with uh, pretty good instructions, usually a Exploded diagram. So if you get stuck, just look at that. Or record yourself like I'm doing, and then you can go back and watch it later. How you uh, took it apart. So I just held this float underwater or under our cleaning solvent. No bubbles came up. So I assume it's good. If we would have had a pinhole. It would have been full of fluid or something, so we should be all right. Another great thing about this ultrasonic cleaner is you put it together right away, as opposed to leaving it sit overnight or whatever in carb cleaner, so uh, you don't forget how to do it. Because if you're like me, sometimes you leave it soaked for weeks. Well, there's our first hang up. The needle and seat, or the seat setup is deeper on the original one. So, we're uh, probably going to have to reuse that. Which, 
doesn't have any crap in it. Looks pretty clean. Should be fine. These uh, torch tip cleaners are real handy for cleaning these jets out and other orifices. So we got it pretty much all together. The only thing is the accelerator pump, like right there is where it applies it. And that's at idle. So maybe it just gives it a squirt when you let it off idle. I don't know, but uh, I can't figure out how I could possibly have screwed that up because everything has to go that particular way. And then this rod here basically kicks it on high idle when you pull the choke. So that's your carburetor at idle. And that's your choke off. As you apply choke, kicks your uh, high idle on. And I can't remember which way this rod went, but really the distance between here and here is going to be the same whether that rod's this way or this way or that way or that way. Should be fine. And of course, uh, the diagram that I said to use is different than this thing, but the gaskets are the same. And of course, we got all kinds of extra parts. We will need the base gasket. This guy. The rest of the stuff I don't know about. We'll uh, save that for a rainy day. I'm sure at some point we'll be digging back through there. Okay. Let's go stick this son of a biscuit on there. Let's see if it runs any worse than it did before. Needle nose pliers, torch tip cleaner, screwdriver, big screwdriver, toothbrush, magnetic tray, ultrasonic cleaner. A little bit of compressed air, clean, well-lit area. I know, those are hard to find. That's all you need to do one of these things. Just take it apart, clean it up, blow through all the orifices really good, and uh, put it back together. It's not rocket science. But yeah, that thing looks like brand freaking, freaking new. Ultrasonic cleaner, excellent tool. Cool tool of the week. That was just what was in the hose. And just goes to show you what happens when you run flex hoses. I feel like we're gonna have to pull this radiator out anyway to uh, at least try to clean it ourselves, if not take it in somewhere. Cause that's not good. Not good at all. I don't have a ton of faith in this thing, but it's about the best I can do here. I know everybody's going to comment down below the kind of chemicals that you can run through it, but enough says hot water is good enough for us. If uh, that don't work, then we're taking it to a professional, getting it cooked out, because we don't want to deal with overheating issues. If you haven't, join the Duff Approved Club. Be a member down below. Only a few bucks a month, and you can help support Duff's rawhide addiction. Such a good boy. Let's pull the uh, water pump, because that thing sounded a little bit growly. I think I see something suspect, and I'm sure there's no rust in there in the impeller that's causing any noise. Well, that didn't want to come off very good. Well, a lot better than I thought it would look. Definitely some crud in there, though. Water pump doesn't look <laughs> Never mind. It looks pretty bad. But what I was noticing, there's like your weep hole when they go bad, when the seals go out, they leak through there, it tells you they're bad. But I don't know what this uh, little retainer clip thing does here. I was wondering if that wasn't what was making our noise. This thing actually sounds good. Is it the generator? No, oh, that sounds good too. Even though the grease cup cappy flap's gone, no need to grease those. It's just got a timing chain, inspection hole. Probably a gear anyhow. I'm gonna see if I can't clean a little crap out of there. Get the garden hose out here, see if we can't 
flush some from there to there. I don't know, not much you can do with that big gaping hole there. There's a petcock down there we can take to drain a little bit out, but see how it goes. Again, beyond the garden hose, maybe you could try a concoction in there, but just might need to go somewhere and get cooked out, unfortunately, because there's a lot of rust in there. That's what happens when you run straight water. Good call, Gramps. Oh well. Well, the base gasket's different. I wonder if we get any of them around. Well, we scrounged up a gasket from our collection. It's not a nice, thick base gasket, but that'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Way better and then a new or admeator hose. No flexi hose, no more. This thing's cleaning up pretty good under here. Hopefully she cools. I don't have uh, much hope for it. it. Sounds like it didn't before, so why would it now? All right, I think I got a, the heater hose that was here has a plug in it already, so we don't have to worry about that. So we'll put a plug in the uh, port on the head. And it's ready for coolant. Sweet. Well, I didn't get any points, but I got a cap and a rotor. I can't remember why I didn't get any points. Not because these ones were good. So let's swap cap and rotor and some wires. Maybe mount that coil permanently. Call it good. Oh, it's my favorite. The universal kit. That's fine. I kind of wish they had angled boots on the other end. We'll make it work. At least they're not red or yellow or blue. So I went and found a new old stock Ford Motorcraft 12 volt coil because uh, we're kind of going to convert this thing to 12 volts. Well, I don't know about convert it. We're just going to run it off 12 volts. What are you grumbling about? 12 volts, it's going to be just fine. We just got to change a few bulbs, change the voltage regulator, you know, stuff like that. It'll be okay. I promise. All right. Yeah. We're just gonna run the ignition, it's fine. And then I also made a new wire to go between our new <coughs> coil and the distributor because, yeah, it looks funny being orange, but also if that cloth wire were to fail, uh, we'd be sitting on the side of the road. And so I got that mounted up, got our new coil wire made up. Now I'm gonna go find some battery cables because these things are hideous. And then, <laughs> Drain the oil, figure out that starter pedal, why that isn't working from inside. Then we'll have to figure out some temporary wiring of sorts for the ignition. Because I was thinking there was no key in here or something, maybe. Yeah, no key. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll put a switch in for it. Or maybe we'll just hot wire like we do everything else. And uh, some new cables and such. Yeah. Chewy. Chewbacca. Grrr. Yeah, I know. That was a terrible Chewbacca noise. I'm gonna go see what I can find for battery cables. Well, what kind of surprises are we gonna find in here? Nothing but the finest dinosaurs, I'm sure. Ooh, a little uh, orangish. Oh, that's from all the croil we put in there. 
That makes sense. Not too bad. Not super black, not all milky. We don't want to bring them uh, boys to the yard. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. That's good, no surprises. We uh, don't like surprises around here. We got two newish battery cables. Actually, they are new. We got oil in there. We got five quarts of 5W30 Quaker State. We're just about out of that free stuff the neighbor lady gave me. So I'm guessing these things are probably supposed to be running some fancy 30 weight. Who knows? It'll be fine. We don't even know if this engine's any good. So that's why we're only doing stuff external. And you're not doing anything internal. If that makes any sense. We're not doing a valve job because we don't know if this thing's gonna not overheat. Yeah, we're uh, getting close. I think some brake parts came in today. Need to go get the mail. Yeah, still gotta figure out that starter switch. We're about ready to put a battery in it and see if our fuel system's working and see if it holds water. The list is getting shorter. Well, this is our little eBay score that's gonna get the brakes onto this thing. It's a Wagner Products F200-660 wheel cylinder cup assortment from Cooper Industries. Chesterfield. What? Chesterfield? Winchesterton Fieldville, Massachusetts. What? I'm from a little town like that in Iowa. Is that right? What part? Winchesterton Fieldville. Look at all this goodness in here, Duff. We got five ace. 15, 16, 7 ace, you name it. We got cups for days. And we need uh, 7 ace for these things. There's eight in here. We're gonna use up four. That's gonna get this thing back on the road. I thought about putting this in the ultrasonic cleaner, but she's pretty grody. I'm guessing the old man's gonna see this video and be like, oh, I'm gonna run that crap in my car and buy new ones. We're just gonna whammy them in there and put it back together. Good enough. There you go, one half a overhauled wheel cylinder. We just gotta do the other side, put it all back together. You know, while we got it out, we should probably take that bleeder out because that thing looks rusted, closed, and in place. It's probably gonna snap off because it's so small, but uh, let's address that before we get all excited about this. Well, we got that little guy out of there, all cleaned up. So, yeah. We just gotta put her back on and do the other side. So, let's address this starter button, foot switch, linkage conglomeration. Let's see if it turns over before we start. We got different battery cables. We just did a lot of stuff so let's verify it turns over before we start messing with that linkage. Real good. So I'm gonna put this foot switch linkage back in place and we'll go inside the car and see if it turns over. We got no action out here when we got action in there. So I guess we got to see if there's some type of linkage that needs adjusting or lubricated or what we got going on here. So this is the foot pedal up there and this is the rod. It goes in the hole right here. And you can see when it's hooked up, it's about right there. So it's already almost half its travel. So that's all the travel you get. That's where it starts. So you'd see if it was about an inch longer, we'd get some more travel. So I'm gonna put, just wedge it behind it and go push the pedal and see if it works now. It'll tell us if we lengthen that out, if that's what the issue is. I think that's what it is. 
There we go. We just need to uh, lengthen this out here. Should be pretty easy. Nobody sees it, so we can really cobble it up too. So here's what I come up with. I uh, got a hood prop rod. Made her about a uh, quarter, half inch long or something like that. It's pretty crude. I haven't drilled holes or nothing yet, but I'll make sure it works. So let's stick it in there, see what happens. This way, if I screwed up, this one's still here to use for reference. Or if I got something else screwed up, we can use this one again. There's some other adjustment, right, Duff? Right. All right, now let's see what happens. Looks like it works. So now I'm gonna mark where I need to drill some holes for cotter keys and uh, drill some holes, put some cotter keys in it, and we'll have this project wrapped. Maybe. Got a couple holes drilled in there. Now we just gotta slide. Son of a biscuit back into place. Backwards. I suppose. There we go. Whoa! Battery cable's hot. A smile for the camera. Tech tip of the day. Unhook your battery cable when you're uh, working on the starter. Otherwise, uh, half your cotter key gets stuck to your pliers. And you arc out your favorite angled Needle nose channel lock pliers. Dang it. That wasn't very smart. Good news is, I don't think that cotter key's coming out of there. A little quick work with the flap disc. They're good as new. Now let's uh, go inside and try it out, see if it works. Well, of course it's gonna work. Like a champ. Pretty good, huh, Duff? You know what's not pretty good? That seat. We're gonna have to do something about that. Your side's good, though. Lucky. You probably wanna ride in the back anyway. You just heard ride, that's all you care about. What do we got left? Brakes? Get fuel up there? Oh, we gotta do a little wiring. I'll have to figure something out there. See what I can find for a switch under the dash we can use. I think I saw one when I was laying underneath, pushing the starter button. All right, so we're gonna run a red wire from that starter post into the cab to a switch. And then I made a new yellow 14 gauge wire going to the coil. And I think I found a switch we can use. Down here under the dash, it's this little guy. So I'm gonna take him out, but we're gonna bench test it before we go through all the work of wiring it up to find out it don't work. Sound like a good idea, boss? Oh yeah, look at that tail go. That means we got the go ahead. All right. Yeah, okay, I'll get back at it. All right, we've got our multimeter hooked up. Out of limits, switch is off. Flip the switch on. There you go, we got continuity. On, off. On, off. She's good. Well, since it works, we're gonna slam it in. So we got a wire running from our starter up to our switch and from our switch to our coil. Now let's uh, go mess with some brakes. Since the master cylinder is lower than the wheel cylinders, so we're gonna use the syringe method, reverse bleeding them. I'm gonna push it in the bleeder up to the master cylinder, well down to the master cylinder because the master is below the wheel cylinders. So these things are usually a pain in the behind to bleed. So that's why I like using this method because usually the garbage I work on has the master cylinder below the level of the wheel cylinders. Air wants to go up. Instead of chasing our tail, we're gonna do it the right way, right Duff? Not having much luck getting the uh, brakes to work. I don't know what's going on. Got pressure at all the wheel cylinders, but we're not getting fluid up to the master cylinder. Then when I go pump the master cylinder, I not get any pressure. Well, obviously I filled the master after that, but might have to do some uh, playing around in there. And I really don't like having those two old hoses on there. And those haven't shown up yet, so we've driven without brakes before. So we'll just forget about that. Let's uh, fill it up with coolant. I say that in quotations because we're going to put water in it because we're not going to waste money on coolant if this thing leaks. And we're probably going to flush it a few times anyway, so. 
What do you think, Duffelopagus? Is it gonna... Chasing our tails, that's what we do a lot of around here. He doesn't think it's gonna hold coolant. We don't know. Did it have coolant in it when we started? I don't think so. It's probably because that flexi hose. These new hoses, they're good. Kinda wanna paint that black, even though we don't paint anything, because silver just looks silly. I guess it matches the water pump. Well, she's full. And the cores of the radiator look a little soggy. I think we're gonna need a radiator. There's about uh, three spots that are wet. One thing you don't want on your radiator, it's wet spots. Leaking radiators haven't stopped us before though. Let's put some gas in it. That better not leak. Hey, if you guys haven't subscribed to Old Car Guy yet, make sure you do that. He made a whole video on running out of gas. It's amazing what five gallons of gas will do for you. Not much. So the term, don't be a wank, fill your tank came up. You got one of these uh, Greta approved water haulers here. Get yourself one of these uh, adapters to put a little kink in there. Makes it way more ergonomic. What did you find now? A leak. Uh, you wanna go underneath and check those hose clamps on the filler neck? That's what it's gotta be. Guess we'll address that. Tighten up the clamp down there on the uh, fuel filler neck. Of course I oriented it so you could hardly get at it because I tightened it up when it was on the bench here. Oh well. We got her loose, rotated where it needs to be, really cranked her down, shouldn't be a problem. Figured out which way is on and which way is off on the switch because I forgot to label that, so we got that now labeled. Let's uh, fill that fuel bowl up with hot sauce. See if this thing uh, lives again. You can see the moistness on that radiator. Moist. I don't know, maybe a good radiator shop can fix it, but I'm not having very good luck with radiators as of recent. Awesome. Yeah, 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 okay. Hot sauce, I got it. Everybody says use the two-stroke gas, so we got a little mixed in there, not much. Two-stroke oil with gas makes two-stroke gas, right? Sure. Yeah, we have no idea where the idle set at on this. Oh, you can see it leaking out that throttle shaft already. Looks like we forgot to tighten that one screw, because there's a choke cable that goes through there, so we should hook up the choke cable too. Don't forget to do that, Duff. Hopefully by priming this, we can get fuel sucked up by the fuel pump. Wishful thinking, right? Son of a, this thing's got a big bowl. All right, now let's see if she cracks off. A little more gas. Oh, that seat is Oh, what's that Adam Sandler song? I got a piece of car. Spring always pokes sea balls. All right. Starter. Ooh. Not bad for a guy who doesn't rebuild carburetors. What's the idling? Not quite. I'm going to turn that idle up. Oh. We gotta do something about this seat duffel up, I guess. Rubber floor mat out of the Silver Fox's C10. Perfect. Oh yeah. This is gonna be plush. Well, it doesn't have wheels, so we're not going for a ride, but sure, check it out. Oh yeah. The seat's way more gutter now. Oh yeah, we don't have a starter button or switch.
that we're out of fuel in the carburetor. Yeah, I know. I should have done that when I was out there adjusting the oil. Now she's idling. Pretty good, actually. Must not be getting any fuel. Oh, you like this thing, huh? This thing's just a purr in a way. Can't really tell because the fresh fuel is clear. But yeah, looks like it's full. She's uh, running on her own. Where did we put the air cleaner? I didn't see an air cleaner in there. Still need brakes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, almost like I know what I'm doing with that carburetor. Not even smoking out the shop. Yeah, you just don't, don't move. Make yourself comfortable. Not bad for some dum dum who don't know what he's doing. And a carb kit for a Ford that's 30 years newer than this. Oh, that's what I love about these flatheads. You can turn them down to just almost nothing. How low can you go? We're gonna leave her a bit higher. You driving or what? You dig the old Jeepster, huh? Well, we better open the door. Yeah. That's what you think too. Go outside, get some fresh air. We gotta get some wheels on this thing and let her idle outside, go through a few heat cycles. I've had good luck with Cascade dish detergent, flushing these systems out. But I know there's some other stuff that guys use too. Good news is we're not gonna screw up the radiator because that thing's already screwed up. Ah, oh, fuel pump's working. I was worried about that. Now we just gotta figure out why my brakes don't work. Maybe they'll fix themselves too. Self-healing brake stuff. Another reason we can't take it for a rip tonight. It's dark out. Six volt bulbs get real bright for a second on 12 volt. Same with 12 volt bulbs on 110 volt. Ask me how I know. You see if the clutch works? Took a little messing around, I think the clutch was kind of stuck, but once we got her into third, it uh, came unhung. That's good. I just need brakes. Warming up a bit. Well, we ran her for quite a while. Got the backup furnace running now, because uh, she's a little chilly in here. So Duff and I are gonna go drive around and look at Christmas lights. Hope the place warms back up. And it never got too hot. I think she's up to like 160 up here. 150, 160. And what, 145 down there? 120. So, I mean, it's hot. I mean, it's warm. Kind of on the fence. It's, it didn't get super hot, but then it didn't have a load on it. It's not super warm in here by any means. So, let's go check out some Christmas lights. Super excited this thing runs. We just gotta get brakes. Even got her on the ground rolling, swept up the floor. It's a good feeling. What do you got on your nose? Hoover schneef? What do you, what do you, bird poop? I think it's some of that bird poop. All right, freaking awesome. Duff, what are you doing sleeping? We're gonna go for a ride in a Jeep. Uh, these are short now. That means lots of sleeping for you. But we gotta get this thing outside and film it. And uh, hopefully not walk home in the dark. I'm not driving in the dark because we don't have any lights. We're not going to hug them up because they're going to go boom. We stole the battery out of Rex, this cute little never start. Because uh, Rex is parked for the winter. And this thing worked when we parked it. Also took some bed frame, made a quick little clamp, hold that down. Of 
course, these rods aren't threaded far enough, so I had to put some spacers in there, but should be good, right, Duff? Still full of oil. Water actually kind of quit leaking. It's, you can still see water in there, good enough. It's uh, a little brisk out, not too bad. More windy than anything. We've had a Jeep on the channel before, but I don't know that we've ever had a convertible. This counts as a convertible, right? Well, anyway, enough yakking, we're going topless. Hopefully this thing starts. We're gonna do this. All right, let's do this. Oh, you got no heater either. Has anything had a heater yet? All right. Ignition on. Choke don't work. Pops right off. Like it. This time I'm trying to drive it. Oh yeah. I'm already cold. You good? You want a handkerchief, scarf, anything? You're gonna hang out the window anyway. Don't forget, no brakes. Unless they fix themselves, but I doubt it. Well, they kind of work. Kind of better than nada. Put my glove on so I don't freeze my fingers off. Save them for the fan blades. She smokes a little bit. You give her a second, Duff? Oh. Good good in this thing, man. No side windows? This thing is built for you. I'll tell you what it's not built for. The winter. It's one Jeep thing I don't understand. The mirror is like half the size of the windshield. You have to look around it to see where you're going. I don't know how smooth it runs. I didn't even put points in it. I'm putting new points in, that's just a myth. First gear is not synchronized. The ice will slide. Just a, just a little bit, just a skosh. Let's find the old man a 12 volt solenoid and a 12 volt relay and overdrive works. She's squirrely. Oh, that's right, those kingpins are wasted. Speedo works, says we're doing 35. Stuff flying everywhere. Why is it hiccuping? Telling me something? We need some like leather bomber goggles. Not just for driving this, but all the garbage we drive. I'll tell you what, it's gonna be a cold walk home if this thing fails on us today. Oh. The speedometer is making the noise of death. We should fix that. We don't want to break the speedometer. She needs some oil. She's dry and it was spinning up to 70 mile an hour. And we're not doing 70. If only we had some daylight. Oh, that's right. No brakes. Well, I know. Park by some CRP so Duff can go chase birds. Okay, you can stop anytime now. I'm gonna go poke around under there, see if we can't uh, unlock a bomber. Don't worry, Duff is not shaking because he's cold, he's shaking with excitement because he knows that this BI RDS and that CRP. And he gone. Alright, speedo cables unhooked. We just gotta find that dog. I know you just wanna go hunting, but we'll hunt on the way home if we gotta walk. Off 
off-roading in the Jeep. Not real good with that clutch. Sorry. Straight pipe. Uh-oh. I was just going to say, straight pipe four cylinders don't sound very good, but you sound perfect. You're okay, Jeepster. You can start back up. Oh. Well, why did it die? Starter won't turn over. It kind of felt like we lost ignition. Wires come unhooked? I mean, we hooked up a switch and everything. Oh. you bring a flashlight, Duff? Did you bring yours? I got mine. I'm going to go uh, take a look underneath the hood, see what we can find. You know how I was just bragging about those points? I think it needs new points. We give them the Mortsky Flick, see what happens. Find Duff. Died again. Wreck. Maybe that's why he didn't want to come back. He knew I wasn't going to make it very far. I think those points are shot. You find some water? Probably all hard right now. Uh, it's getting dark. I feel like this thing is not gonna like donut corner. I don't, don't want to walk back in the dark. Why does it only run for so long and die? So I mean, it's the condenser. It's kind of weak spark. I bet it's the condenser, Duff. I suppose if we throw some snow on the condenser. See you later. I'm gonna try cooling off the condenser. I don't think that's what it is. I'm gonna do what I don't. All right. There's spark at the coil. I've heard of this before where uh, condensers are bad. And after they uh, run for a while, they'll die. And people put new points in. It doesn't fix it. You gotta put a condenser in. And that's kind of seems like what it is. I mean, it needs points too, but points don't just leave you dead like that and then come back to life. It's that condenser. Got it. I put a big old snowball on it. Maybe it'll stay cool long enough to get to town. If not, we got more snow on the way. And this is why I'm filming this late tonight, because we're supposed to get snow tomorrow. And uh, convertibles in the snow are probably really cool for somebody else. It's definitely what it is. The condenser is getting hot. Just running like a champ. I need a film crew so somebody can film me putting snow on a condenser. Cause I don't have time to move the camera. I mean, yeah, we probably got another 20 minutes of daylight. Look at that. Let's see if we can show you when we get back to the shop. I mean, we're gonna make it. We only got like a half mile to go. is swirly though. This like this thing's almost as dangerous as that 60 flat top. Like herding cats down the road. Yeah we're not making that corner. I knew I shouldn't have said anything about those points. What do they call that? Foreshadowing. 
Duff, we're gonna make it. We might run through the garage door, but we're gonna make it. It's got a really tall first gear or a really chattery clutch. It's kind of got brakes. What do you think, Duff? Are you a fan of the Jeep? Yeah, because it's easy for you to jump out of when it breaks down and you go chase birds. You do like hanging out the side of it. Yeah. We got a little work to do. Oh, come on. Grandpa would be proud. So right here is the condenser. Hooks up to the same terminal that the coil hooks up to. So I just kind of set a snowball right there and I think it cooled it off enough to do what we needed to do. I know it needs a set of points and put a condenser in it, but I mean, I think, I don't know why they make a million different condensers. Can't all condensers just do the same thing and you just put them on there? But whatever, we could probably scab one on there and go for another test drive. Battery didn't fall out. It's not hissing coolant everywhere. I can put my hand on it, so it's not even running that warm. Anyway, yeah, a moderately successful test drive. We didn't have to walk back. And we identified that either the cable or the speedometer needs some oil. Probably both, because that was making the old rear, 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 rear. You know, kind of sounds like the meat wagon's chasing you. So that needs to be addressed. Brakes are not good, but I'm not going to mess with them much until we get some new brake hoses, because they got to be rebled again. Anyway, do a little bit of wiring. Uh, convert everything to 12 volt, address the points and condenser. Gonna have to run some water through it a bunch, flush it out, see if it comes out of it. I don't know. I don't have much hope for A, the radiator, or B, all the crud in the engine block. But for the shot, we're not really out anything. A lot of this stuff we could put on a different engine if uh, we find one. And if you got one of these engines that's good, let me know. Hit us up down below, repair at gmail.com. Little 134 flathead. But yeah, Duff. He likes it. You a Jeep dog now? I think so. You need a bath, and this thing needs a bath. Should we do two birds with one stone? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what him scratching himself means. Bath time for Jeeps and Duffs. I think this thing will clean up good. Yeah, good call, Duff. He says we gotta get all the crap cleaned out of the inside, because we don't want to get all this stuff wet and rot out the floors. So, Duff's gonna look for live animals and dead and their fecal matter. And uh, I'm gonna clean as much of this out as I can. Teamwork makes the dream work. You get mad when I put my thumb up at you, don't you? Who doesn't have opposable thumbs? <laughs> you. All right, you're a gentleman and a scholar. Back to work. Well, it looked a lot better when it was wet. That paint's kind of dulling out. And you look a lot better dry. Wet dog. At least he's a clean wet dog. So, I guess I noticed quite a few things. The paint's real thin on the hood. It was a pretty minimal prep job. As you can see, it's coming loose pretty much on every edge, edge of the hood. Edge of the cowl vent, edge of this trim. Looks like it's all cracking out like it's lacquer. So I'm thinking this thing was all yellow, except for maybe this top part was black. Cause it looks like there's some yellow on the fenders. There's a little whiskey dent right here behind Duff. Yeah, the paint's just really dull. And I don't know if this was where the spare tire rubbed or what. 
kind of torn on I think a spare tire is the way to go but long term if a guy was going to paint it I think I'd take that off suck the bumper up tight maybe I don't know it's uh, the old man's call there I dig that bumper I'm guessing those are pretty hard to come by or expensive when they say willies like that and this one of course is tweaked but I'm thinking I can straighten it out a bit in the press uh, I'm not going to buff this one out. Like I said, it's single stage. I'm almost positive of it. I don't know. We could maybe rub on a spot and see if it would come out. What do you think, Duff? Not really sure if it would bring back any shine to it or not. And I just, I just really don't get excited about repaints, especially poor repaint like this. Also, there's some like, I don't know if this is house paint. I don't know what this is, but there's some big blobs. Oh, something up here that need to come off. Something rubbed on her there. Getting a little bit of rust down at the bottom of the windshield here. Still seems solid, but I mean, as far as rust wise, this thing's good. Even when I was vacuuming the floors, a couple of pinholes was all we saw. You know, there's a couple up there at the tow board. She's got some pinholes. That side's only got one little pinhole in that bead. Super solid. Like I said, I think my grandpa got it and it was like not even 10 years old and it sat inside quite a bit. We're gonna clean up for the night. I don't know what we're gonna do next. We might be about done with it. Maybe we could clean up some hubcaps. I'll have to look up, see what ASP was with that snake there. I'm sure it was something real fast. So we'll let things drying off. We should, uh, these three hubcaps look pretty decent. I think this one was in the back of the car. This one's the one with the big whiskey dent in it. That's dark out. We could go fix that a little bit on the stump. Let's see if we can uh, clean these up with some steel wool. Let's see if they look any better. Well, these things still suck. This one, you know, got the dent. But all the other ones, they kind of pop out right here. They got a, I don't know, extruded. And this one's in. And this one's significantly lighter, it feels like. So I wonder if this isn't a reproduction of sorts. I don't know. Maybe these two are reproductions because they pit it up real bad. And these things didn't really shine up the way I wanted them to. I'm sure you could get after them a little bit harder, but they got pretty good scuffs and some dings and whatever. We're going to huck them on there. And, uh, going to be good enough for who it's for. I think you can get new ones pretty reasonable. If you got some of these hubcaps and you want to part with, and you got a four and a half inch bolt pattern wheel that you want to part with, let's get these clips. Hit me up. Mortskyrepair at gmail.com. Because, uh, yeah, we're going to need one for the back. We can't just put any wheel on it. And I think you can buy these clips from the, the Jeepster man as well. So we can figure that out. This is like I'd get crazy and steal wool that bumper. Usually it works a lot better on chrome. But maybe this is cheap chrome after the war duff. I don't know. You're drying up looking pretty. Going to go on a date tonight? And then, uh... Somebody must have screwed a hood ornament to that at one time. That's too bad. Let's get some hubcaps back on this thing. Oh, and I found a condenser and I threw on there. Some mystery condenser I had laying around. So hopefully that resolves that issue of leaving us stranded. It ain't perfect, but a little English stump and a rubber mallet. Looks pretty decent. Those hubcaps, they sure make a difference. And then those new white walls. Okay, it's a white line, whatever, Duff. Let's do something dumb and try polishing a spot. Right here where it's obnoxious. This is probably a really bad idea, but we're gonna do it anyway. Little uh, Meguiar's 105 Ultra Cut and a microfiber towel. Yeah, it sucks, I know. Open a can of worms here. 
man, this stuff is so, I mean, it makes a difference, but this stuff is so oxidized. And I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but there's so many cracks in this lacquer paint. Let's see what the old man wants to do. It does get a little shine to it, but that's gonna be a lot of work on this car. Well, what do you think, Duff? Is that a wrap? I think so too. We're done with the Jeepster. We're gonna go take it down to my old man, give it to him, early Christmas present. I mean, he's giving you your own car back a present. I don't know, it runs and drives now. I did pick up uh, points and condenser from Napa Todd, so they're probably not gonna work or fit, but whatever, we tried. Might stick those on there before we drop it off. Maybe we'll even film dropping it off to see the excitement on my monotone father's face. But thanks for watching, we appreciate it. Down below, uh, think about joining the Duff Approved Club to uh, support his rawhide addiction and uh, get some behind the scenes action, stuff like this when we pick them up, stuff that we don't film, like we uh, just pressure tested and welded up a snowmobile tank that Boom Tube Brian sent our way. That was a lot of fun. Said nobody ever if you've ever welded anything thin that had to hold liquid. Think about purchasing some merch maybe. I don't know if you'll get it by Christmas by the time this comes out. Probably not, but you know, give it to somebody for uh, New Year's maybe. But that's a wrap on this one. We're going to have a celebratory derailed sour ale with rhubarb and strawberries from Rhombus Guys. Thanks for the brews, rhombus guys. We're punching out. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. I think this Jeep's gonna be a lot of fun. Is that a train? Hmm, that's interesting. Duff, what do you think? Supper time? On to the next one. What are we gonna do next? We'll find out in the morning.